This is Bob. So, Bob loves Apple. In fact, he's been saving up the entire year for a new iPad Pro. Bob was especially excited to finally get Final Cut Pro along with a brand new iPad this year. This was Bob's reaction to the M2 iPad Pro announcement. This is bullshit! Another year, another iPad. Who would have thought we'd see this day? Every year we pretty much get new iPads, I guess. Okay, so I've been using the brand new iPad Pro M2 for the past two weeks and being an avid iPad Pro user since day one of its launch, I had a bunch of questions. When Apple first announced this, I remember thinking to myself, um, what exactly is different here? Why even put an M2 chip in here? Because the M1 iPad Pro already seemed overpowered. Is the hover feature any good? I thought, you know what? I need to give this thing a chance. So I ended up buying it, ended up checking it out, reviewing it, and uh, I was leaning on returning it until I realized I, I just didn't make a video yet. So let me first make a video and then we'll consider <laughs> returning it. Okay, look, all jokes aside, this thing is an amazing tablet computer. No qualms with it at all in terms of this being one of the most capable and pretty much one of the few tablets that I can comfortably recommend to people to buy. It's no surprise to me that Apple pretty much owns 31% of the tablet market because most of the iPads are pretty solid devices and Apple does a great job with them. But I wanna talk about who this particular tablet actually makes sense for. But before I do that, I wanna also talk about my experience using it. Okay, so overall, I gotta say my experience with the M2 iPad Pro was pretty much very similar to my experience with the M1 iPad Pro from last year. There's four main differences. Number one, Wi-Fi 6E enablement. Now, this basically allows the brand new iPad Pro to utilize Wi-Fi 6 routers, or even if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router, it should theoretically give you faster Wi-Fi compared to prior generations. Now, something weird is when I actually did this test compared to prior your iPad Pro, I found my iPad Pro to be slightly faster than the actual brand new iPad Pro. So I guess your mileage may vary. My, my router is not a Wi-Fi 6 enabled router, so maybe that's why, but yeah. That's what, that's what my experience was at least. So this wouldn't be like a reason that I would particularly wanna to upgrade to the brand new iPad Pro too. Next up is new 5G bands. Now I actually use 5G on my old iPad Pro, my M1 iPad Pro, I got the 5G version. I actually find it very useful because when I'm out and about, sometimes I just don't wanna tether and use my phone's battery as well. And just having that SIM card already in the iPad Pro and I'm able to utilize uh, LTE or 5G connections uh, on the go, it's pretty helpful, pretty handy. New iPad Pro apparently has new 5G bands, which will give you access to different bands and frequencies to get even faster speeds. I personally didn't get the new iPad Pro M2 in a 5G version, so I can't really test that out for you, but I can tell you for a fact, it wouldn't be a reason why I would specifically want to upgrade either, so it doesn't really hold much merit with me. Okay, so the next two features are more so the features that would entice me to upgrade to the M2 if there were you know, any reasons. Firstly is Hover. Now basically Hover is the step technology where you can bring the Apple Pencil to you know, within 12 uh, millimeters of the screen and it is going to basically show you where the Apple Pencil cursor is. It, you can hover over certain things to get more information on them. So there are certain applications where this might be useful. However, in my personal opinion, that's a small value add and really something that I don't see as being like a huge deal or anything. It's a nice to have like the complimentary Apple stickers that you get. And it can be somewhat handy if you're like a huge sketcher or you draw a lot with your iPad Pro and to be able to see kind of like where your impact is gonna be with your pencil. So I, I can see the appeal for some people, but overall I don't really see this as a huge deal to upgrade. And of course, the last and final difference is the M2 chip, which is naturally gonna be faster than the M1 chip. However, do you need that much speed? But look, there is an argument to be made that you know what, down the road, maybe Apple's gonna start bringing out more pro uh, applications to the iPad Pro. And when it does, then maybe that M2 is really gonna kick in and be helpful and handy. Honestly, I usually am of the policy that if you don't need it right now, then don't buy something with the anticipation of future usage. Okay, so now that we've addressed these differences, I want to do justice to the actual M2 iPad Pro, just talking about the actual iPad and my experience with it as a whole, rather than just comparing it to my prior year M1 iPad Pro. And before I get to that, 
that, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Now, there's a lot of VPNs out there, but Surfshark is one of my favorites because of several reasons. Firstly, you pretty much have an app for like every device, whether it's a Mac, Android, iPhone, Chrome browser, you have an app. And they allow unlimited devices so you can have your entire family's devices secured through this membership. They also have a strict no log policy, which is important for VPN. Now, if you're wondering what are some of the benefits to VPNs and why I personally like using them, firstly, because it makes your entire browsing private. There's a lot of times we work on the go. If we're working at coffee shops, if we're working at libraries, if we're working at hotel rooms while we're traveling, we're using public Wi-Fi and public Wi-Fi's are generally not that safe. Another reason why I like VPNs is because you can get around geo-locked content. There's a lot of times these shows are different depending on which region you're in. And also if you're trying to cop sneakers that are only available in the US, then it also helps there. So essentially a VPN provides an added layer of security and privacy to all of your activity online, which has become even more integral in today's day and age where we're doing everything from banking to shopping to putting our personal identity out there online. And if you're interested, you can sign up with my link down below and you can get 83% off on your membership plus three free months and don't forget the 30-day money-back guarantee and back to the video Okay, so as a standalone device, the M2 iPad Pro is stellar. Firstly, the screen. Oh man, I can't tell you how much I love this mini LED display on this thing. The liquid XDR mini LED display with ProMotion. I mean, it's a, it's a thing of beauty, guys. Like, you gotta see it, like, to actually experience this thing. I can guarantee you one thing. Once you start using this, going back to a non-pro motion device with less than 120 hertz and not as good quality, it just doesn't feel the same. Even the graphics in real life seem boring to me now. <laughs> Now we still have the blooming issues that I had brought forth before with my M1 iPad Pro. So I'm assuming that we're pretty much using the same panel from last year, but the blooming stuff, it doesn't really bother me. Okay, now let's talk about the iPad Pro from a productivity standpoint, because ideally that's what you wanna use it as. Whether you're a student, whether you're a coder, whether you're somebody who just wants to use the iPad Pro on the go as a convenience device, the iPad Pro is a great productivity tool. Whether you're using Apple's native suite of applications like Pages, Keynotes, Numbers, or Microsoft suite like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or even Google suite of applications, this thing is great to use. It supports all of that and it supports all of them pretty well. However, I will caveat this by saying if you're a heavy Excel user, I come from a finance background, so we use Excel quite a bit. The experience of using Excel on a tablet or iPad, it's, uh, it's not the best. You probably still wanna to stick to a computer for that. But basic Excel stuff, like you're just creating like, you know, quick spreadsheets and just comparing stuff here and there, sure, go for it. But other than that, yeah, I really find that the iPad is super helpful, especially being that on the go device. I'll take it with me, I'll work in the car, I'll work at McDonald's, I'll work at a coffee shop. However, I wanna caveat this by saying you really wanna make sure that you pick up a keyboard with a trackpad if you wanna make the iPad Pro a productivity tool. So you probably wanna get either Apple's Magic Keyboard or maybe one of Logitech's iPad Pro keyboards with a trackpad because having that keyboard and trackpad is clutch when it comes to bridging that gap between a pure tablet and a computer. And I gotta say, Apple has been adding more and more features to the iPad Pro in order to push this with the productivity narrative, right? First we had Safari, making that a full-fledged, you know, almost desktop level browser was huge. And now with Stage Manager and all of these productivity focused features Apple is bringing into the mix with iPad OS, this is starting to feel a lot more robust. With, you know, Stage Manager now, we can have multiple windows open and I can compare different things and it just makes things a lot more easier for me to, you know, have a better multi-window and multitasking experience. Overall, I use the iPad Pro for a lot of my admin work for my business, and I think it really works well for that. It's a great complement to my MacBook Pro. Now, apart from productivity, the iPad Pro also shines in another area, and that is creativity. If you were somebody who only had an iPad, could you get away with editing video on a iPad Pro? 100%. A bunch of my friends that actually run really successful YouTube channels, they've done pretty much their entire workflows on an iPad Pro, and they edit all of their videos and upload and everything with an iPad Pro, so it's definitely possible. But when it comes to creativity, what I personally use the iPad Pro for is mostly putting together scripts and storyboarding for my videos, sketching, drawing out ideas, and even prepping for some future potential wallpapers that may or may not be dropping. So make sure you guys are following me on Twitter and IG.
I definitely think this creative aspect is what really makes the iPad Pro such a great hybrid device, having multiple points of interaction with it. Like you can not only use a keyboard, you can not only use the mouse and trackpad, you can not only use it with touch with your fingers, but also the Apple Pencil. This really makes the iPad a powerhouse when it comes to creativity. Okay, now there's a few things that I also wanted to mention with the iPad Pro in terms of what I think it really does well with uh, and some qualms that I have with that as well. Firstly is using the iPad Pro as a secondary device. It is surprisingly helpful and handy, especially if you have the 14 inch or the 16 inch MacBook Pro with liquid retina XDR display as they both will have pretty much the same display and everything's gonna match across the board. I think it's the perfect combo. Next is content consumption. Now I know the 12.9 inch can get quite cumbersome, which is why I was actually really excited for the M2 iPad Pro initially because my thoughts were where maybe Apple is gonna bring this mini LED display to the 11 inch iPad Pro, which is probably my preferred size of the iPad Pro. As much as the larger size being more cumbersome, I gotta tell you, that mini LED screen, it's a sacrifice I'd be willing to make every single time. Everything just looks so good on it, like watching TV shows, Netflix, YouTube, it's just a solid experience overall. Okay, all in all, I think the iPad Pro is a fantastic device, but now it begs the question, is the M2 iPad Pro actually worth it and who should even be buying it? So in my opinion, if you own the M1 iPad Pro, like I do myself, I don't really see any need to upgrade here. And me personally, I don't think I'm gonna upgrade from the M1 iPad Pro to the M2 this year. The differences just aren't that many, and I just can't justify taking that financial hit of selling the M1 iPad Pro and buying the M2 uh, at a higher price. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, let's say you're a first time iPad buyer, or you own an older iPad or a different version of an iPad. Even then, I find it pretty tough to justify spending several extra hundred dollars that you'd have to spend to get the M2 iPad Pro when you can easily pick up a device that's pretty much 95% of the way there. Uh, that's an M1 iPad Pro refurbished or used on the used party market. And you can even pick this up with even more storage uh, and with 5G, for example, for the same price as the M2 or even cheaper. Then you can take those extra dollars you saved and pick up a keyboard and an Apple Pencil for your iPad. But, but if you don't mind spending the extra money and you want the absolute latest and greatest iPad out there, let's say you're somebody who keeps their iPads for like more than five years, then there's potentially an argument to be made in order to have the faster M2 chip with better Wi-Fi, better 5G standards, and having that hover feature as well, because maybe Apple is going to add more pro apps and you're gonna be keeping this iPad for a long time and maybe having that M2 chip is gonna be more beneficial in the long run. And from that point of view, I don't think you're really making a mistake picking up an M2 iPad Pro. I think you're just future-proofing yourself a little bit better and you're willing to spend that extra dollar, which will get you technically a superior product. Overall, it's a terrific tablet that teeters towards totally taking over the territory of the tablet trade. In any case, it's been fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video beneficial and helpful. Subscribe down below, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay blessed, peace.